yet. He's going to have to make up for a lost time when he gets it. Boston boy. Boston boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This 
the, the tune that, uh, you know, that Bill Monroe mentions this tune in, in his great uh, classic, Uncle Pan. He says, uh, there, he played an old tune called Soldier's Joy, and he played one called Boston Boy. And uh, I was always curious what that Boston Boy was about. Uh, years ago, uh, the, the man that uh, really mentored me a lot in mandolin playing and music in general was a man named Ralph Rensler. Who, uh, was a neighbor of mine to save New Jersey. He took me to hear Bill Monroe for the first time when I was about 16 years old. And, uh, Where at Sunset he, Park? He made a tape. Uh, no, it was uh, New River Ranch in Rising Sun, Maryland. And Ralph had made this tape of Bill Monroe and playing all these fiddle tunes that he never recorded. And, uh, one was Boston Boy. He let me listen to that tape, so I, uh, I learned it and recorded it. I don't know if you'll ever record it. But, uh, I'll try to get it as near as I could to Bill.
for any mandolin-oriented questions. Tell us about your instruments. Pardon? Talk about your instruments. Talk about our instruments. Play your instruments. Talk about your mandolins. They're just mandolins. They have eight strings. It's hard to keep them in tune. It's impossible. strings this morning they're pretty shot now. <laughs> yeah. No, they're still they're still okay. Uh, my problem, I change them usually for every professional application. Uh, if I have a gig I'll change them or a recording session. Usually if I don't change them on a regular gig, they'll break. So or one of them will break and that's even I don't want that to happen. So. Plus, they give me free streams. <laughs> <laughs> I used to boil them, though. You know, take them off, boil them, and you can get, they can kind of rejuvenate. No joke? How long? <laughs> Until they're al dente. <laughs> Collings mandolin. Um, I actually live about 20 minutes from the factory at, down in Texas, just outside of Austin. And um, I've had this for about four years, and I just love it so much. I actually chose for like three Collings mandolins, and we got to sit with them for like a week, and this is the one that I chose. So I've been really happy with it. I love it. Make it sound great. Uh, yeah, I'm playing a Collings as well. This is an A style compared to Sarah's F. It's Pretty similar instrument, really. So mine has an Engelman top, which is just a different wood. I like it. It's a little darker. I think you get a warmer tone. Mine's about two years old. They're real comfortable to play. And they sound so good. Yeah, I'm playing a, a, a red diamond mandolin made by Don McCrossy. He uh, called me up and had an idea to uh, copy uh, my uh, my old 1922 F5 that Steve Gilchrist nicknamed, nicknamed Crusher. <laughs> he he uh, borrowed it one night, took it home with him, and uh, I asked him later how long, how long did he spend with it. He said he never went to sleep, and he measured every inch of it and counted all the grains at the top. And, uh, it even had a way of measuring the flexibility of the top and back. And of course, to do that, you have to carve the top and back, and he actually made Ten uh, tops and threw away four, and he gave me my choice of six replicas. And this is the one I picked. So I can't really tell it from the other one, hardly, but it's, it's less than a year old. But I, I like playing lots of different mandolins for different uh, applications. I've been playing an Italian mandolin with my quintet. It's called a Giacomel. It's kind of a radical uh, take on the traditional Gibson design uh, made in Italy. So uh, I kind of think of mandolin as, as a voice, you know, it's like uh, so many uh, mandolin players are enthusiasts, you know, they just obsess over, is this mandolin better than that mandolin? And uh, I think it, you know, feels good, it sounds good to you. And, I mean, they're all different. And uh, it's like saying, well, do you like uh, Ralph Stanley's voice better than Ray Charles's? Or do you like uh, you know, uh, Billy Holiday's voice better than Aretha Franklin? I mean, they're all great. Do you like Howlin' Wolf or Luciano Pavarotti? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's what makes a, a ball game, so to speak. How many do you have in there? <laughs> um, I've got about 4,000. 
I have three. The first one was like my first beginning mandolin, and I've since turned that into. I've got like all my hero signatures all over that one. And then my other one um, is a Weber bitterroot. I haven't played that in years. Ever since I got this, this is all I play. So. Yeah, I only have three. Two, I have a uh, column similar to that, and I have a Gilchrist as well. 12, 13 years old. It's a great man that I just found. <coughs> the Gilchrist for some reason didn't travel as well. You know, my top was sinking in a little bit when we go to Colorado and places like that. That's too expensive a man to, to ruin. I just leave it home now. These things handle the conditions pretty good and they sound good. Let's see. Uh, maybe we should play something on the mellow side. And the wall. Walls, walls. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a
steering wheel, David. Hang on a second. <laughs>
any more questions here? Does it ever feel like the mandolin is moaning in your hands? <laughs> what, does it ever feel like the mandolin is moaning? Floating. Floating. Sometimes it looks like you're not even touching it. Floating. Yeah, sometimes it sounds like it. <laughs> so, when you, when you like jam out and do big souls like that, how much of your brain is thinking like music theory, I should hit these notes, and how much of your brain is thinking like just letting your hand touch it? And well, I try not to think too much about music theory. But, So it's really you have to get you know music's a language I I think uh, you know we don't really well we should be thinking about what we're saying when we're playing <laughs> and learn the English language you know and then you kind of pretty much run with it you know uh, what they call improvising I think it's just like using the language of music and if you you know I'm sure all of us have played uh, certain phrases uh, before. You know, we're not really inventing that much while we're playing, but with, you know, as you you know develop uh, experience and perfect the things that you're trying to do, uh, it becomes kind of internalized and you can kind of spontaneously converse in that language without really thinking about it all that much. I, you know, I try to. What I'm mostly thinking about is trying to get with the groove, you know, keep, you know, try to make it sound good. And, and uh, you know, if that means, if it's a song I don't know, that, that probably means laying out a lot and listening, you know. Or if it's, you know, something, uh, you just have to be a team player in music if you're playing with uh, other people. Talk about your practice routine. Do you practice? I try to play uh, every day. I don't really have a routine. Uh, I have developed some exercises that sometimes I'll, it's always good to warm up. Like, you know, getting it cold uh, is, you know, never, you're never in the best shape to. This about is. I did what you just said, I hit it cold. <laughs> You know, sometimes uh, I think it's good to warm up and play things that actually practice things that you can't play. You know, like work on things that, you know, that where you have to play it slow and deliberately get every note. You know, I kind of try to work on things that, uh, and this holds true for a band, you know, if you have a, a part that's difficult, just rehearse that part. Real slow. What song is that for you? Oh, I mean, you know, the songs, you know, like bebop songs, you know, any, anything that's kind of foreign to the mandolin, you know. Play us some bebop. Uh, just to work on, but, you know, it comes to playing them, you know, I, that's why I became a composer, actually, or part of the reason I was really trying to emulate my heroes, Phil Monroe and Jesse McReynolds, Frank Wakefield, Bobby Osborne, they all seemed to write original mandolin tunes, so I figured that was part of the deal, and so I started writing tunes, and, you know, when you write your own tunes, you can kind of make, you know, make them playable. <laughs> Whereas if you're just trying to learn Flight of the Bumblebee, you know, that's you know, a lot tougher. <laughs> so I, I realized that there weren't that many people that wanted to hear Flight of the Bumblebee anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pardon? Frank Wakefield. Frank Wakefield? You guys know New Camp Town? Right? Yeah. You can try that. Yes. You mean Wake Frankfield? Yeah. <laughs> David. David, he wrote this song Frank. before he was born. 
Yeah, he did write this before he was born. Or after he was born. Yeah, Frank showed me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try to do this thing justice. The new Camp Town Race.